Yay Networks. Welcome back to Gentle Mayhem. Welcome back. I would like to begin by pointing out the fact that my beautiful, beautiful wife is wearing a Philadelphia Eagles t-shirt. I am. Round of applause. Everyone. <laughs> this is a big moment. I'm doing it for you, Shane, so I am glad that I am getting the recognition I deserve. I am very excited that you are wearing an Eagles shirt. Yes. I will be more excited if you wear it every day from now until the Super Bowl. I honestly would because this is somehow the softest shirt I've ever felt in my entire life. That is not why you're wearing it. Well. Keep that in mind. It is though. If that's the reason, don't tell me. If it was scratchy, it would not be on me right now. It is so comfortable, so soft. And yeah, I'm supporting your team in the Super Bowl. I'm I'm excited for that. This is a big moment. <laughs> this is a formative moment for Yeah. Me. Weren't they just in the Super Bowl though? A few years ago. Yeah. But you know what? We most are- Yeah, but most teams don't get like, this so often well teams that are great ascend into greatness okay and that is what we're doing right now that's your team and my team that's also my team now <laughs> your team i'm wearing the shirt we have a really fun episode for all of you go today. birds yeah. <laughs> we have a really <laughs> fun episode for all of you today and what are we talking about we're talking about a couple of different things. I know we're going to talk about uh, disability and sex. <laughs> that, yep. That that's is, one of them. That's not the main topic. That's well, I prepared it. for that one. That's what Hannah said. We're about. talking about disability misconceptions. Yeah. But so, that's that's the one that I was like, ooh, I have some things to say. When we began this podcast, we wanted to use it as a way to advocate for the disability community. And one of the biggest hurdles that the disability community faces is all of the misconceptions that our society has about disability. So today and probably in future episodes, we're going to talk about some of the most common ones and break them down. And hopefully it will make you question your beliefs and assumptions. Maybe it will get a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah. Who knows? And if you followed us for the five years that we've been doing this, You've probably heard most of these in passing, but I think we're saying some stuff today that is new. Yeah. Maybe, it's a little bit new. Maybe even groundbreaking. Okay. I, I wouldn't call it groundbreaking. <laughs> we're going to get to that in a little bit, but first, we have got to tell you about the ridiculous debacle of a night that we had this week. We weren't <laughs> planning on sharing yeah. like, a story to begin, but then this happened and we were like, we have to tell them, because it was... Your mayhem to a T. It might have been our worst night ever in our relationship. I think, like, this has never happened to us before. It was awful. Like, a moment that led to real breakdowns in our our beings. Yep. It was horrible. Like, (laughs) it was horrible. Anyway, go ahead, Shane. You can begin. So, to set the scene, we are out here in Los Angeles visiting for a few months. And this week, we decided that we wanted to visit. Disneyland. Yay. Cute. Cute. Fun. Yay. Fun. However, Disneyland is about an hour to two hours south of where we are staying. Yeah. Based on the very unpredictable LA traffic. Yeah. When we made the drive, it was maybe an hour and 40 minutes. Yes. And because of that, we couldn't figure out what we were going to do with Chloe, right. our dog. We needed to let her out to pee. You know, if we left at 9, got to Disney at 10.40, right? stayed until 4, got home at 6. Like, it was just a really odd... It wasn't going to be worth the money of, like, going to Disneyland if we're only staying for six hours and then driving four. Yeah, I mean, we wanted to spend all day there, but we didn't want to leave Chloe alone all day. Yes, so we decided we would get an Airbnb for the night so that Chloe could be there we could let her out either during the day or it would just be like a 10 minute drive to Disneyland so we could let her out in the morning, let her out at night and it wouldn't be so long. Brilliant. Brilliant idea. So the night before Disney, Disney's on a Tuesday. Yep. So on Monday, we leave this LA house around 4.35 to drive down to the Airbnb near Disney. Arguably the worst time that we could have driven down there. It was basically stopping the traffic the whole time. So we are grumpy when we arrive at our Airbnb. Yeah, it took almost two hours. We are hungry. 
we are just we're running out from the drive. So when we had booked this Airbnb, which was only a couple days earlier, uh, prior to us arriving, we had exchanged messages with the host about the step situation. She sent us a photo of the back uh, where we figured Shane would be able to get inside and it looked okay. We brought our ramp with us. Um, and our ramp is very small. It's a threshold ramp, but it was only one step going into the house. So we figured this will be fine. It's all we have. So we arrive and it's dark. Yeah, it's pitch black. It's raining. It is raining. It sounds like I'm exaggerated, but nope, it's raining. It was raining. It's cold. Which yeah. Which is like the only cold day in LA ever. 45 degrees, raining. And again, we're angry. We're hungry. <laughs> we're we're just, hungry. We need to get inside, order some DoorDash, and go to bed. Shane's really setting the scene. So we go to the, I go to the back, and I had to like walk through the house uh, to get to the back go outside the back door and then walk around to unlock the gate so that Shane could get toward the back. Yes. I go through the house and when I open the back door, I'm like, oh no. You're like, this isn't right. <laughs> is this the only back door? Because this is very clearly two steps. And the, the bottom step is very clearly like an 18 inch step. It is gigantic. It is a mountain of a step. And I, th- I did not recognize it from the photo. I was like, this cannot possibly be the photo that we looked at and visually approved with our minds. Like, this cannot possibly be it. We've been doing this for a little Your bit Your whole now. life, you've been doing I'm it. I'm pretty good at analyzing <laughs> if I can get in somewhere. Yeah. So I'm looking around. It is the only door. I go around to Shane in the front. He's waiting by the gate. And I'm like, Shane, you cannot get in back here. This was the moment my stomach dropped because Hannah came out of the side gate and yeah. was walking towards me in the van. And her face is dropped. Yeah, petrified. She's like, I can tell it's either there's a, a dead body in the backyard or something's not right. Yeah. She said, Shane, there is no way you're getting in here. Yeah. Me, having not seen it yet. Shane was like, but I saw a photo. I was I, like, no, come on. Like, we can figure it out. Yeah. Let's grab the ramp. Let's he, thought I was, he thought I was just hungry. I did. I thought you were <laughs> hungry or like... N- confused <laughs> i don't know what it was but we we unloaded yep we bring our stuff around the side with chloe with all chloe confused like kind of unsettled because this is new and different yeah i see the step the mountain of a step <laughs> and my stomach drops because i am not getting up that ramp no and we don't even have a second ramp so if you had gotten up the first step yeah, there was, there no was another step and we couldn't you're on the first ramp. We didn't have anything to get up the second step. It was literally impossible. So we tried. Yeah. We are an <laughs> Lord hour knows. and a half, two hours from home. <laughs> like we're sleeping in this house tonight. So yeah, we need to figure it out. Yep. I'm heaving. Hannah lines the ramp up. We're shoving. Shane's chair shoving, is just nothing. Her saying, getting wet because it's raining. If I didn't say that yet. Yeah. Chloe's like bursting at this point. <laughs> Because she's like, what is happening? Yeah. She's like, let's just go inside. We couldn't do it, guys. We could not get up even the first step. Don't know what would have happened if we did, right? (laughs) We couldn't get up the second one. I know, but we were trying so hard. And it was in that moment where we were like, oh, my God. Yep. Like, what did we do? We actually can't get inside. We're going around looking for side doors. Shane's like, but there's a garage. But this place was a duplex, I guess, which we didn't really know. And the garage did not. There was no interior door into the house. So I was opening like closet doors inside. I was like, hey, go inside and find wood. <laughs> like, that's a little major brand. Yeah, Shane was like, what about towels? Get all of their towels. And I was like, Shane, first of all, their towels are white. It is raining. Your wheels are dirty. I am not piling their towels on the ground. And then what? You would climb a mountain of towels 18 inches into the air? I was, I was like, you were desperate. Are there any shipping pallets? Are there any ramps? <laughs> That's really what you wanted. Do you have a ramp closet in your house anyway? <laughs> no, there was nothing. We could not make it work. No. So what we did, and this is where we became lucky, where things actually ended up. Working out. This is after we've had our full breakdown. Yeah. And decided that we hate uh, life. <laughs> um, we went on Airbnb and we found another very accessible house. Yeah. Like 10 minutes away. Yeah. We couldn't believe it. Like, well, I could believe it. Shane was in charge of booking this Airbnb. Mm-hmm. And Shane, right, that's the end of the segment. Shane has a track record of not thoroughly 
weighing the options before he chooses something. Say he orders something online. He goes with the first result when he searches. Well, the first like satisfactory result. Yeah, which for you is usually the first one. You're like, looks good, purchase. You don't look at anything else. And so for the Airbnb, he clicked on the first one, saw that we could make it work probably with our ramp and booked it. And I was like, Shane, if you had looked a little further, there was one with no step. I would like it to be known that when I booked the improper Airbnb, I gave the listing to my beautiful, beautiful wife and she approved it. But I, I thought it was the only option. I didn't think I was turning down the accessible one. As the second Shane, opinion, no. you're supposed to Mm-mm. say. Everyone is going to agree with me. Don't even try. If you are in charge of booking the Airbnbs, you are supposed to be the one that is are looking you, at the options. Are you saying it is my fault or are you saying it's our shared fault? It's your fault. <laughs> okay, everyone, let me know what you think. I think that I'm going to win this one. Are you serious? <laughs> this is getting bad. The person who books, what what was I supposed to say when you sent it to me? Hey, Shane, is this the one that you picked instead of a nice accessible one? What about, <laughs> what about are there any better ones? Yeah, I think I said that and you were like, no. I always say that. I'm like, so is this so, this is it? And you were like, yeah. The moral of the story is that <laughs> we made it. We went to our new Airbnb where the owners of the first one, even though they had a no refund policy, were kind enough to give us a full refund. Yeah, which was nice because no one could stay there that night since we had booked it. So, yeah, so thank you to those owners. You were very thoughtful. Yeah. Uh, and let's all agree that we should make steps shorter <laughs> or a ramp. <laughs> <laughs> from now on yep all steps from here on out <laughs> all right well that was our little debacle <sighs> we'll be right back and then we are going to dive into some disability misconceptions hello welcome back today we are joined by disability advocate hannah Elward. joined i'm here every week Except for one. Yeah, but you're putting on your disability advocate hat. Oh, okay. We and al- we're also joined, we also joined by disability advocate Shane Burkoff. Not advocate, just disability. <laughs> we're joined by disability. By this disability. By disabled Shane Burkoff. Right here. Uh, yeah, so we're going to break down some of the common misperceptions that people have about disability. These ideas are nefarious. Because ultimately they lead to real obstruction to the human rights of disabled people. Yeah. So there are real implications here. Absolutely. All right. Just to start off on a real heavy note, (laughs) uh, this is oppression. This is awful. All right, let's begin. Number one, living with a disability is a tragedy that deserves pity. I feel like that one should be self-explanatory, but in case it isn't, Obviously, we have an idea in society that being disabled is a terrible thing. And so disabled people, therefore, need to be treated with pity. Yeah. I cannot tell you how many times in my life someone has come up to me and apologized Mm -hmm. for what I have to go through or someone said... Or like they're perceived what you have to go through. You know, it's not like they see something happen to you and they're like, I'm so sorry. It's like they see you in the grocery store and they're like, I'm so sorry. Yeah, or how people will give me gifts because they believe that my life is so miserable. I'm talking about strangers. Yeah. I don't mean like my parents give me (laughs) gifts. I mean like strangers come up to me... Money sometimes. ...in public and hand me money... 20 bucks one Take time. Tickets to events. Yeah. You know, a little candy, <laughs> which I probably shouldn't have accepted. Uh, <laughs> I did. Um, and and they're doing it at, to be kind, but it's based on the idea that, like, was it the kid in the wheelchair? He must be having a pretty rough time. Let me give him a gift to make his day. I remember on our first ever date, uh, we were at a little diner and halfway through a woman from another table got up and came over and began to pray very loudly. Scream pray. It was screaming, scream praying uh, over Shane, holding onto his head, actually. It wasn't really over him so much as through him. I yeah, I was being it was very shocking. Uh, but she was screaming like healing prayers and uh, everyone in the restaurant was watching, which was mortifying. Uh, and then Shane said, thank you 
but I actually have a very happy life. Please stop doing that. And she thought about it for a second. Like she was taken aback and she said, oh, that's not how I meant it. Yeah. I was like, actually, it's exactly how you meant it. But that just refuted your entire prayer because you were like, Lord, give him a better life. And he just said he's happy. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's easy to kind of understand how this idea came to be the prevailing idea of mm-hmm. disability. Our media tells pretty much only negative stories about disability. Yeah. You know, we see someone get injured and become paralyzed and it's portrayed as the worst possible thing that can happen to a human being. Well, I think the way it's usually portrayed in the media is also like this happened to this person. Can you believe that they're still smiling? Yeah. Like this person got injured. And somehow they have still found the will to live, you know, and this happens again and again. And at no point have we thought, huh, like most people who become disabled have a will to live. Like maybe this isn't the, you know, the, the thing that we yeah. keep saying like, wow, wow, wow. But like at a certain point, it's just how it is, you know, and obviously people do have negative experiences with disability and becoming injured. But that's the only thing that we ever hear about in the media, and that's not really the norm of the lived experiences. If you look at studies that examine the quality of life of disabled people, it's no different than non-disabled people. Yeah. Um, you know, disabled people are, there's people that love their lives, and there's people that are less overall satisfied. Yeah. Um, but there's Which is normal, yeah. Yeah, there's certainly not a significant, like, Disparate, yeah. uh, having a bad life. Mm-hmm. Um, People, just like in the general population, aren't thinking about their disability 24-7, you know, yeah, and in a that, negative way. The thing that bothers me so much is we have hundreds of hours of video about our life together online that people can consume. And if you watch any of that footage, you should come away with the idea that we have a wonderful life like we have things that make us happy, we travel, we work, we have found success, we have love. You see all that, and yet people still leave comments every day that are like, oh, I feel so bad for him. Mm-hmm. He can't move. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, Look at how happy I am. I know. I, I, it doesn't make sense. Yep. It makes my brain fizz a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> so that is misconception. Number one. Number two is pretty related. Yes, this is very related. Disabled people are brave slash heroic slash inspirational for living their lives. And now I am brave. Okay, Shane, brave about what? What exactly have you been brave about in the last... Give me a scenario. The last week. No, I want to think of... Just tell me one time you were brave. This morning, (laughs) I woke up and made a choice. Okay. That I will not let my wretched wretched tragedy of a disability bring me down Mm -hmm. is that and then you ate the eggs benedict and the tater tots is that was that the the brave choice i decided to wake up and put a smile (laughs) on my face and go to breakfast and carry on okay despite it all Mm -hmm. i'm gonna confuse a lot of people right now i know they're like wait what is this the misconception what hit what No, this is very related to the last one. So when you see people with disabilities as a sad thing that you should feel bad about, and then you see a disabled person at the mall, you might think, oh, wow, they're at the mall. Like, this is so sad and yet so amazing and heartwarming that they are out here at the mall. Instead of at home crying. Yeah, in the same way that I'm also at the mall, you know, it's... (laughs) It's remarkable. You're very brave. But the fact that they are at the mall is just so amazing and inspirational to me. You know, it's the same thing as those posters that you might see of a disabled person, you know, running a marathon and... Or a kid like playing hopscotch and he has a prosthetic limb. Yeah, something like that. Uh, And it says, no excuses. You know, so you see a disabled person doing the very same thing you're doing and yet it's supposed to somehow motivate you, you know, to, to... to look at your life differently. Like, wow, you should be so so grateful for what you have because their life is so, so bad. I have got, this is a dead, I can't tell you how many times someone has come up to me in public. This is a bad one. And literally said, like often with tears in their eyes, (laughs) that they are so happy and so inspired 
to see me out in the world. Yeah. Period. <laughs> there is no more qualification. Not for the work you've done. I read your books. No, no, no. No, it's nothing about my professional career. Yeah. It's simply that I am out. <laughs> <laughs> and it sounds so ridiculous in today's day and age, but it's generally older people who fall into this way of thinking. And it's because disabled people were locked away in institutions and care facilities and not seen by the general public years ago. And so now that we are, you know, getting more resources and access in the world and we are able to like go to the grocery store. Yeah. Um it, it's a new site for some of the non disabled population. I will say though, I you know, I agree that in person it does tend to be older people who come up. But if you see there's so many inspiration porn, that's like what this is referred to, inspiration porn videos online, you'll see like on Instagram or like TikTok, there's a lot of comments from young people being like, this is so amazing that, you know, this girl with Down syndrome was asked to the prom. You know, this is so incredible that someone would, you know, even think to include her, you know, stuff like that. And it, it, so it's it's like reinforcing it for every generation. We just keep seeing it again and again. The way we see it on our YouTube channel most often is people leaving comments that say, wow, if he can get a woman, oh, yeah. if he can have a wife, what am I doing wrong? Yeah. And the assumption there is, again, my life is so bleak, so miserable, so sad, that there should be no way that I have a wife yeah. who loves me. I should not deserve that. Yeah. I figured out some, you know, miraculous loophole. You know, <laughs> I, I'm brave. I'm inspirational for this. Um, and whereas, like, they being the much more valuable and worthy non-disabled person yeah. can't find love. Well, those are usually said with a little bit of hatred toward you also. But people also say wow, I love that Shane still has a sense of humor or that he's able to joke around. Like people will say that a lot. And I just think, you know, they, they again, expect you to be upset because of this idea that disabled lives are negative. Mm-hmm. It, it's like the same two things again and again. And yet they see it. So like these videos go around every day. If you go on Facebook right now, I'm sure you can find a video that reinforces inspiration porn. Like we see it every day and yet no one has thought, wow, maybe disabled people are just like doing regular things. Yeah. I, I How many times can you see it before you're like, maybe this isn't really inspirational to me anymore? A great way that you can kind of counteract this if you if you are realizing that maybe you do fall into this way of thinking. Yeah. Follow more disabled people. You know, there are plenty of disabled creators and influencers out there that you can follow to A, be entertained, but B, to learn about their experiences. And all the ones that we follow, many of them, like they make content that shows how amazing and cool their life is. And then when you start to see these videos that go around, you're going to be like, this this feels weird now. You know, so if you see a video of kids playing on a playground and one of them is disabled and it's, you know, the point is that it's heartwarming that there's a disabled child being included. You know, if all those kids weren't disabled, would you think that that's a heartwarming video? Or is that just kind of weird to post a video of kids on a playground? Maybe disabled people should just be included and it doesn't need to be a remarkable thing. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Something to think about. Mm -hmm. All right, we have two more misconceptions. All right, the next one. Caregiving is always an immense burden and those who care give should be glorified and praised for their selflessness. All right, caregiver, how do you feel about that one? Well, this one irritates me quite a bit. (laughs) I think you can find examples of this in our comment sections of people either saying I'm making a terrible choice by being married to Shane and ruining my life with caregiving or saying it's so amazing of me to make this sacrifice to be married to Shane and to care give. And important caveat before we talk more about this one, we are not saying that caregiving is never hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. For some people it is. Yeah. But again, by and large, it is not a rule that caregiving must be an immense burden. That's the thing. It simply is not true. It's like if we thought about, you know, pa- parenting, like having kids is a horrible, horrible choice. And anytime you had kids, someone was like, that's going to ruin your life. <laughs> it's just like, a, it's very weird. Like, yes, yeah, some people 
It's, it's often very difficult having kids. There's a lot of really hard parts about it, whatever. But that's not like the what we should have is the overwhelming idea of it's like, like the main story. having it, kids. Yeah, it's the same kind of thing where why would you have that be the narrative? Would you say on the spectrum of caregiving, yeah. from like least involved to most involved, you probably fall on the higher end of that scale with my care. You think? Well, compared to like... I was going to say lower end. Yeah, really? Well, that, that's a, a perfect example of how <laughs> Hannah feels. But I feel like my level of care, even though it's like fairly minimal, you need to do things like get me on the toilet. I think it's and, middle. I think it's middle because okay. I think it could be a lot more... Like if you had medical equipment that needed to be like adjusted every 15 minutes. Are you saying that my wheelchair is not medical? No, equipment? it doesn't need to be adjusted. I'm just saying I feel like there's things that could be like time sensitive and you don't really have any of that. You know, My basic point was that Hannah does, performs a level of care for me that I think many people feel like is like the top of the caregiving spectrum. Yeah, And yet true. Hannah as you just heard, <laughs> reports that it's the low end or maybe the middle. Yeah. Caregiving for us is seamlessly incorporated in our day. When we wake up together, Hannah gets me dressed and gets herself dressed. Like we eat breakfast together so that Hannah can help me take bites. Yeah, and I think a lot of people who don't have experience with caregiving will kind of equate it to having kids. You know, like pa- pa- people who have or kids I've are like animals before okay. like having a pet. <laughs> okay. That's always lovely to hear. <laughs> but I'm just saying, people who don't have experience are like, hmm, what is this like? It's like having kids, and so they think to themselves, oh my god, I could never have kids and care give for like another kid. I I don't know, or like worse than kids. I don't yeah. know what they're thinking, <laughs> but we get that a lot of like, I could never ever do that. And I think people are thinking about it in a very specific way of like, Shane is not contributing anything right, yeah. to the relationship. I am only dependent. What, right? Yeah. Like how yeah. could Hannah handle him and a kid? Like we get that all the time, but Shane is an equal partner in the relationship. So he's getting a lot of stuff done throughout yeah. the day that I think people aren't giving him credit for. Like I have a lot of free time. <laughs> I'm one of the lazier people that you might meet. I'm not a go-getter. <laughs> I enjoy leisure. Uh, and Shane does a lot of stuff during the day in the hours and hours that that you're lounging that I'm <laughs> trying to escape from doing work. Our life would not be afloat if it were not for me. I am proud to say that. That's true. Shane keeps everything afloat. Uh, so yeah, I just I I think that they have a very skewed perspective of what Shane does and what I do. Yeah, and again, I think that really comes back to the stories that our media tells. Yeah, when we see caregivers in movies and. In books, they are giving up <laughs> wonderful things to partake in the kind of selfless, act, selfless yeah. act of taking care of someone. Yeah. It's seen as a sacrifice. Yeah. And for us and many other interabled couples that we know, it's just not in that category. It's not in that category. It's yeah. just a part of their life and not something that either individual feels like is a burden or a sacrifice. Yeah. Ready to move on? Number four. This is the big bo- Number four. This is the big boy. Disabled people don't have sex or intimacy or romance. Not true. Not true. <laughs> this is another one that you can find in the comment sections of our videos. People, if you want to learn about misconceptions, <laughs> just, just take a look. peruse our YouTube comment section. I wouldn't do that <laughs> if I were you. Um, but man, do people think that Shane and other any disabled person can't has have sex or doesn't want to yeah, i don't as asexual beings. yeah in in like a mandated i don't know in what way they think you can't i guess physically i guess they think that like your physical organs wouldn't function well that and they see my attraction yeah my, my ability to attract yeah a partner as non-existent. True. So it kind of goes hand in hand. And even if you did, it wouldn't work. Right. There's no physical way. Because yeah. we get a lot of like, there's no physical way that they could, so they're lying. Yeah. And again, caveat. I, I shouldn't have to say these caveats. I know. Obviously, there are disabilities that affect sexual function. Yeah. But that is not the rule. Yeah, that exactly. That is not the overwhelming majority. All of these. I mean, <laughs> we're not saying that any of these are never true. Of yeah, course, everything right. that we're saying is true for some people. Um, but it's just the fact that this is how we frame it, you know, point blank in yeah. society is the problem. Yeah. Um, when Hannah and I began our channel, we never really considered the idea that people would question 
our intimacy, our love, yeah. our romance. And boy, did they. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the biggest, like, I mean, all the criticisms, but they're more just troll comments. Yeah. That we get, or that we got in the beginning was like, there is no way that you two are having sex and you're lying to the world <laughs> saying that you do because disabled people cannot, you know. Do that. Do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I also see a lot of comments kind of from us, like I'll get some that are saying like, it's inappropriate that I would be intimate with you, you know, like in a, in a way, like people have called me a pedophile, yeah. like because you're smaller, like there's no way like that, that should be like yeah, illegal. That's not what pedophile means, everyone. No, it's not what pedophile means. <laughs> um, and uh, I often see that, like we get comments that are like, if this, if the roles, the genders were reversed, this would be illegal. Meaning like a disabled woman and a a non-disabled man, that would be illegal. It's just wild to me that people think that disabled people can't consent to intimacy. And I think that kind of policing happens a lot more with mental disabilities, but it also does happen with physical disabilities where people say, you know, that that should be illegal to I mean, have sex with a disabled person. Yeah, which goes back to all of these yeah. misconceptions that disabled people are not kind of whole autonomous beings. Yeah, or adults at all, you know, or shouldn't adults. be considered adults. And this is going to sound silly, but disabled people can have sex. Mm-hmm. They can be amazing romantic partners. Yeah. You know, like pat me on the back as I'm saying all this. Um, I'm patting shit on the back. If but they listening. can be really good at sex. Um, <laughs> you know, that we are just as sexual as our non-disabled counterparts. Yeah. Um, and that is the overwhelming rule. Yeah. Uh, not the opposite. Not the opposite. I remember uh, this is going back a couple of years to when I was in college. Also, it's going to be my fifth college reunion next year. Can you believe that? I'm so grown. You're all invited. I'm seriously an adult now. Um, But going back to my senior year of college, I was writing my senior thesis about disability misconceptions. Uh, I know. Speak of the devil. You should have just read that paper today. (laughs) I should have. (laughs) Um, But one of the things that I was interviewing about 40 physically disabled people, and one of the things that came up again and again in misconceptions was this intimacy thing. And so I was reading a lot of papers about disability and intimacy. And I remember I read a lot of stuff, but one thing stuck out to me that I still remember. And it was a paper about, I think it was spinal cord injuries. Like, I think it was just about that. Um, but I remember there was one woman in that paper who said that after she became injured, um, I don't remember where her injury was on her spine. I don't know if it was just like waist down, but it was, I think it was like chest down because I remember her saying that, after her injury, her body like created new pleasure areas on her body. Mm -hmm. Um, and they were way more intense than she had had before the injury. And so her sex after the injury was a lot more vibrant. I'll use that word. I can't remember what she said, but it was, it was, she had intense, yeah, better, better intimacy after her injury because of the way her body adjusted. In the book that Hen and I are writing right now, where we're interviewing um, other interval couples, it's something that we've heard time and time again that disability actually enhances their intimacy because mm-hmm. it requires more communication, it requires creativity. Yeah. And those things help out in the bedroom. Um, yeah. Well, it's funny because well, you see all those studies about heterosexual couples uh, that, like, the women don't have it's always bad it's always yeah it's what it, i wish i had it in front of me like i should have prepared for this with this but it's something like 60 percent of women don't orgasm when they have sex in a heterosexual a big number is it six it might have been like 40 or yeah 60 percent don't it's something around there it's a lot of people don't and then i wish i remember the numbers but i know that in lesbian relationships it's higher like it's a lot higher way way higher maybe like 80 90 that percent like do I, that they do orgasm. yeah exactly that it's way more pleasurable yeah. for the woman women in the relationship in that case and i would love to see a study about either just like dis- disability in relationships or interable relationships i would love to see the ranked pleasure of the people in those relationships because i really feel like it would be way, way higher. Yeah. Like on par with the queer relationships in that study. I thoroughly believe that my disability makes our sex life better. Yeah. Um, and this is a topic that like we don't want to 
give too many personal details. Yeah. But like it has required more communication, more creativity yeah. to find ways that work well for us. Yeah. And those ways work well for us. Yeah. Um, exactly. And so, you know, without kind of that need to experiment differently, we probably never would have arrived at those new I know. kind of ways of doing things that are great for us. Well, clearly a lot of people don't, if you look at that 60%. study. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so this is another one that like, it's kind of one of the main points of our channel that, you know, an interrelated relationship is just as full of passion and romance and love as any other. Yeah. Um, again, not the story that we are getting in our society. Not at all. So <laughs> those are our misconceptions. Yeah. There are so many more uh, out there in the world that we could do hours on this topic. I so know. We'll save more for the future. Um, but we hope that this made you think and analyze how you perceive disabled people. Yeah. Um, and take it to heart. <laughs> all right. We'll be right back. All right, we are back, and it is time for Hypothetical Freaks. <laughs> this is... Whoa, I did it. Oh, Shane. <laughs> Shane. I'm doing it really well. <laughs> you can always do that, and no one wants to hear that. I'm doing a drum roll if you have no idea what's happening. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do it for longer than a second Sometimes at a time. I like to do that. There's a misconception out there oh, okay. that disabled people are not mm -hmm. really talented. Oh, Shane. Um, I would like to refute that. <laughs> Good my, job. My oral... I don't mean that sexually. My mouth. You didn't? <laughs> no. That's shocking to me. I meant my tongue. I well, it sounds okay. Like um, anyway, <laughs> this is the parental version of Hypothetical Freaks because Shane's parents are coming to town Hi, in, a, Mom and Dad. in a couple weeks and yes. we are preparing. We are preparing. And the way that we prepare is by making up funny, hypothetical, mm -hmm. uh, ridiculous things that we could do to make the visit more entertaining. <laughs> um, number one. Oh, uh, we're starting off strong. Go I ahead. Think that when they arrive at our Airbnb here, we should kind of timidly let them know that there is only one bed <laughs> and that the four of us are going to have to share. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, really start them off on that. Yeah. And then <laughs> we have two other bedrooms in real life. We'll keep those doors closed for the first three nights. And when they, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Just kidding. Then, Wasn't that funny? I accidentally leave one open. <laughs> I'd be like, what? There was more beds? <laughs> we don't like to use those. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, no, that room's drafty. So. <laughs> <laughs> my mom is very much like me in the need for a plan mm -hmm. and scheduling. Nice schedule. I definitely inherited that from her. Yeah. Um. So I think what I could do to really mess with her, uh, I love you, mom, is <laughs> when they arrive at the airport, which I know she's already like stressed about stressed and planning and finding each other. Yeah. Never been here before, so it's like yeah, you know, more intense. All the feelings that you would be feeling if we were flying to a new place. Yeah. I mean, my hands are sweaty just thinking about it. <laughs> Uh, but when they land and they text us like, hey, we're here, come get us, I'm going to reply, <laughs> it's this week? <laughs> no. <laughs> we're back in Minnesota. Oh, my God. <laughs> I would never do that. I would never do that yeah, to my parents. But that is so but funny. It's really fun to think about. <laughs> They're really excited to come out here to California, though. It is the furthest west that your mom has ever been. I don't know about your dad. I, I know, know she said dad, that. I don't think they've ever been to LA. Yeah. So they're excited to come out here. I think we should teach them, Shane, just, you know, to be polite. We should teach them uh, Los Angeles etiquette. Oh my God. Very. I mean, like there's. Make it up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think there's some important rules that they should know yeah. as they arrive. I'm going to say that when you're at a restaurant, it's customary <laughs> to get the Raider or waitress's attention by stomping your feet <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> that feels appropriate. Yeah. Um, and that when you're done with your meal, uh, to let the waiter or waitress know that you're finished, <laughs> you place your dishes on the floor <laughs> next to you. I mean, we know it's weird, but it's how it is out here. I know. Like me, my mom and dad don't really like follow celebrity life. <laughs> you know, if I name 10 celebrities... 
I don't think they can name them. Well, I, yeah, I don't think you can name, name them. <laughs> um, but they certainly don't know what most celebrities look like. Yeah. And so I think as we're walking around, <laughs> I'm going to just point to random civilians. I'm like, do you know who that is? That's Joshy Josh over there. You should go get a photo. Oh. You're going to enhance their experience. They're going to come go home and be like, we spotted hundreds of celebrities. These are all just mean. These are just <laughs> mean That's prank. Parents. You're pranking them. We are. Have you done a whole face? Is kind of like a prank. It, it's 100% show. just pranking. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We were going to make some more jokes, but. I can't make this up. Someone is jackhammering outside <laughs> of our house right now. It's very noisy. It is. You can hear that. I apologize. In our ears, it sounds like someone is someone jack is jackhammering <laughs> directly outside our house. <laughs> I hope that's happening while my parents are here. Uh huh. This is just normal here in LA. <laughs> uh, this is LA life. Enjoy yeah, it. It's nice. Um, but I'm very excited for their visit. I think it will be fun. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna have a good time. And hopefully they will have a good time too. All right. That was our episode of Junkyard Mayhem. I hope all of you enjoyed. And I hope you're not beating yourselves up for all of the ableist <laughs> misconceptions. And evil. Evil yeah. misconceptions that you hold about disability. <laughs> <laughs> no. We hope that everyone uh, enjoyed this. And if you did, please leave a review. Leave a like. Yeah. Share it. All right, we need to go. The jackhammer uh, machine. Uh, okay. Yeah, I that's a. My jack <laughs> you only have one sound. Okay. Multi purpose. Everyone, it is a jet out there, and it sounds like it. Okay. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>